In the corner, you can see a familiar face, Angelo Dundee, one of our commentators on CBS Boxing coverage, and today in his working role as the manager of Von Zell Johnson, something that he has taken on fairly recently. Johnson is trained by Dell Williams, as you see Angelo Dundee putting in the mouthpiece of the tall Von Zell Johnson. The scoring under the WBC rules will by the three judges at ringside, Paul Cavalier from Wayne, New Jersey, Eve Shane from Fort Lee, New Jersey, and William Costrup from Trenton, New Jersey. The referee who will not score is Tony Perez from New York. The challenger in white, the champion in black. Mandatory eight count in effect, no three knockdown rule. Count will continue after the bell in the event of a knockdown except in the final round. The 10 point plus system is in effect. Nine points or less to the loser of a round. There can be a 10-10 even round. This is round one live from Atlantic City. Tim, it looks as if Von Zell is going to try to faint, stick, move side to side, as we said earlier, try to kill the clock and try to win these rounds and just let them go by. Meanwhile, the champ is just going to press him, press him, look to land those big punches. Matthew Saad Muhammad, who's got those big punches, a devastating body puncher. 20 knockouts in his 28 victories. Victories over Monte Parla, Marvin Camel, Richie Cates, among the others that we mentioned in his title defenses. His last fight, a fourth round knockout of Lottie and Waller back in November of 1980 at San Diego. Johnson's last fight was in December, a 10 round decision over Ernie Barr. Matthew Saad Muhammad, managed by Bilal Muhammad and trained by the veteran Sam Solomon. Johnson, in pre-fight conversation, very confident. Feels fortunate to have gotten the chance at the title. Remember, Matthew Saad Muhammad was going to fight the WBA light heavyweight champion, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, the former Eddie Gregory on that now aborted big fight card at Madison Square Garden, which was scheduled for February 23rd. The disappearance of MAPS promoter Harold Smith, the card went down the drain, and thus the unification of the light heavyweight title, at least temporarily. Well, Von Zell Johnson gets his opportunity at a championship. The champ landed a real solid right hand inside then, Tim. Shook, shook Johnson a little bit. Johnson has lost only once to Jerry Celestine of New Orleans. More important, he's never been stopped. Under a minute to go in round one, scheduled for 15, live from Atlantic City on the CBS Sports Spectacular. Johnson has shown a lot of movement in this first round. Matthew Saad Muhammad doing what he normally does, cut off the ring, keep the opponent in front of him. Well, he's, he's trying to load up on one big punch, and I, I don't know if that's the correct thing to do. I think he just should get his hands moving. The big one will take care of itself. Under 30 seconds remaining, we're down to 15 in this first round. Whoa! Muhammad was staggered as he was a little bit off balance when he took that shot. Final seconds of round one. We are back for round two, live from Bally's Park Place Casino Hotel in Atlantic City, New Jersey. This is the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship fight. The champion in black, Matthew Saad Muhammad. Now circling to the left of your screen, the challenger, Von Zell Johnson, ranked number eighth in the world by the WBC and a notch higher by the WBA. Tim, that left hook that Johnson landed in the first round could help him. Not the fact that he hurt uh, Muhammad, but the fact that he's going to make him respect him, which means that uh, Muhammad will fall for the face a little better, to give Johnson a little more chance to operate. It really was a valuable punch for him to land. John, uh, Muhammad knows he just can't walk through him. He has to respect the guy a little bit. Celebrity-filled crowd here to watch this title fight. Including Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, the WBA champion. Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Ron Jaworski, his teammate Leroy Harris, baseball Hall of Famer Willie Mays, WBA lightweight champion Homer Kenty, and many other boxing figures. A little blood from the nose of the champion Muhammad. The jab of Von Zell Johnson starting to take some effect. 
Johnson weighed in at 174. Muhammad at 174 and a quarter. Both well under the 175 limit. Johnson's showing a real fast left hand. He, he snaps his jab and then he throws a short hook over. There was the hook. He put the champ coming in with the hook. Well, who can forget that tremendous fight against Yaki Lopez? Muhammad in a lot of trouble, middle rounds of the fight, and then just uh, showing his championship part and a lot of stamina, came back with a 14th round knockout victory over Lopez. It looked like he might lose his title that afternoon here on CBS. Well, he, he's a champ. He's got a great heart. He wants that championship. He wants to keep it. Under a minute to go, round two. He likes being champ. And all fighters do. They love that. They walk around his feet and say, hi, champ. Really makes him feel good. And that's why they fight so hard. And they're an improved fighter. Most everybody, after they become a champion, becomes an improved fighter. Overhand right from the champion landed to the ear of Johnson. Yes, and to Muhammad, it's important to unify the title, which boxing fans would like to see, too. And indeed, Eddie Mustafa Muhammad has the same idea in mind. So hopefully that fight, since canceled, will uh, once again be made. If Muhammad retains his championship here. He's got Bonzel Johnson in front of him right now to worry about. He said he does not take any of his opponents lightly. Final seconds of round two. live from Atlantic City, the champion of the WBC light heavyweight division, Matthew Saad Muhammad in black, the challenger, Von Zell Johnson from Columbus, Ohio in white. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy at ringside. Angelo Dundee, who are often with us in our commentary, working today as the manager of Von Zell Johnson. You know, the crowd is ooing and awing every time that the champ throws a punch, but he hasn't been landing him. Well, he's got a lot of partisan fans here, naturally, from nearby Philadelphia. That's his home. Johnson is the outsider in this milieu from Columbus, Ohio. He's been jabbing well through these first two rounds in a little bit. He surprised me, Tim, because he hasn't been an active fighter in the last couple of years. He hasn't fought any real good fighters. And he's really surprising me with his performance thus far. And, and you know, the funny thing, Tim, he's never been stopped in a fight, and yet, as tall as he is for the weight, he doesn't seem to have the, the body to absorb a punch, but apparently he's been able to do it. You mentioned his inactivity, just five fights in the last three years. He's had 23 in all, but a, an outstanding amateur background. There's an overhand right from Muhammad that landed. Johnson was the Pan American Games champion in 75, the National AAU and Golden Gloves champion in 74 before turning professional, three-time Ohio champion AAU and Golden Gloves. Distinguished amateur career. Said people have been ducking him that he's had difficulty getting fights since he became a professional. Glory by Johnson. The champ is being impatient. He keeps trying to get this guy out of there with one punch. That's not necessary. He really has to get, he has to feel the other fighter. Every punch is a big punch. Throws him off balance so he can't, he can't like, for example, when he throws the right hand, he can't hook behind it. He just has to move those hands and feel the guy. Under a minute to go, round three. Every punch is a home run ball. Again, a trickle of blood from Muhammad's nose. Nothing serious. Got that left jab through to Johnson's face. There goes that home run ball again. You're not going to hit a smart fighter like Johnson with a big punch like that. He's telegraphing his punches. Just has to Less snap 30 out seconds there. remaining in this third round. Coming to the end of round number three, live from Atlantic City. All right, back. Step back. Step back. Round four. Round four of this scheduled 15 round WBC light heavyweight championship fight. Bonzel Johnson, the challenger in white. The champion 
Sad Matthew Saad Muhammad in black. Sam Solomon really gave his fighter a talking to between rounds. Uh, he told him to steady himself down, get the job done. Let's see, let's see the effect it has on the champ. Gil Clancy with Tim Ryan. Live coverage on the CBS Sports Spectacular. There's that overhand right. He hasn't landed that one but once. And he gets the counterpunching from Bonzel Johnson after the miss. Matthew Saad Muhammad had been training for his unification fight against Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. That fell apart. He continued to train, but he had to obviously change his strategy for this tall opponent. Do you think it's had any effect? Good, bad, or indifferent? Well, I, I think that he was really up to, to fight and unify that title. I think that this is a little bit of a letdown. Uh, he's defending his own title, but he wanted to become the champion of all the world, not just half. So I think there is a little letdown. As far as the fact he's fighting a different style, uh, I'm sure that Sam Solomon had good, a good sparring partner similar to uh, Johnson uh, in training, and I don't think that's it at all. I think it's Johnson. Anytime he would fight Johnson, whether he had another fight on first, his style is giving the champ a little trouble. I should say a lot of trouble right now. We're in the fourth round. We'd like to alert our stations that we'll be going to a station break at the end of this round four. Tony Perez warning the fighters to break when he tells them to, not to punch on the break. Johnson has had a lot of movement through the first four rounds. He says he's in good shape, expects to be around the full distance if it goes that far, and that could be a factor whether he can keep up this movement, Gil. Well, with the lack of the lack of action that he's had in the last couple of years, I think that he may be having trouble going that 15 round distance. It's a tough way to go when a guy like uh, Matthew Sod is putting this pressure on you all the time. If he if he does it, it's an amazing feat. Under a minute to go in the fourth round. Johnson in white, Muhammad the champion in black. Watching Johnson, I can see the, why he won all those amateur championships. He's real quick, he has that height, he, he uses it, and he throws nice combinations. 20 seconds left in the round. Another wild miss by Muhammad, trying for that home run ball as he has since the fight began. And we'll be back after this word from your local stations. <laughs> Sam Solomon bet between rounds told uh, Matthew Saad to forget about that right hand. He says, faint the right hand and throw that left hook. He says, and when you throw a right hand, throw that left, left hook off it. Uh, that, that means he just has to snap that right hand there and throw the hook. When he tries to throw the right hand too hard, he takes himself off balance. Well, as he did there with a wild left hook, but the left hook is, is his punch. That's the one he's famous for, but Solomon hasn't seen it, uh, nor have we so far. It has not been a factor. Well, Sam's giving him the correct advice. Now it's up to him to go out and be able to do it. Johnson still with a lot of movement. And he scored to the body with that left. Bonzel Johnson from Columbus in white. The champion Matthew Saad Muhammad in black from Philadelphia. His sixth title defense. And that's just since April of 79. So he's been an active champion. Johnson so far is making all the right moves. There he is moving to his right, moving to his right. That takes the left hook away from, from the champ. That's a very tough move to make for a fighter. There he just did it again. Most fighters move to their left all the time. They have him moving to his right, now back to the left. And he's taking the champ off his feet. Can't get set to throw that big punch. Now starting to fire the jab a little more in this round. They have not thrown a great number of punches in round five so far, but he's just made it difficult for Muhammad to get to him. Well, it's a question when, when the distance is going to tire Johnson out and where he's going to have to stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. There's always a moment of truth in the fight. I don't know when it's going to come on this one. And there he is moving to the right to avoid that left hook again. A lot of these young fighters should watch that movement. Now they can pick something up. Under a minute to go in the fifth round. Gil Clancy with Tim Ryan. We are live 
from Bally's Park Place Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. Johnson slipping that overhand right and now lands with a straight right of his own. What a nice move out of Muhammad's corner. Feinted the right hand lead and landed the left hook. Johnson fighting with a lot of confidence right now. Johnson's feeling real good right now. Feeling good. Under 30 seconds, round five. Remember, Matthew Saad Muhammad is a good late round fighter. He got in trouble against Yaki Lopez, came back to win it. So this, this one's got a long way to go in defense of his title. Final seconds, round five. There's a replay, there's Muhammad missing with that big right hand again, and Johnson goes back and counters. That's what's been happening all fights so far. We're in round number six, scheduled for 15. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy, live from Atlantic City. The WBC light heavyweight championship fight, and so far the champion having trouble solving the challenge of Bonzel Johnson and White. Showed a little muscle for the first time there, too. Well, he's fighting a very, very smart fight. He, he, he lets... He lets the champ chase him, chase him, chase him, and when the champ misses, he doesn't show any respect at all. He bangs him. That's the way to win a fight. He can keep it up. Gonzel Johnson with Angelo Dundee and Dell Williams in his corner. Dell Williams has been training him. He also trains Leon Spinks and has been credited with helping Spinks on his road back. And of course, Angelo Dundee bringing his years of vast experience into the corner of Gonzel Johnson. blocked the worst of that. Got his hand up just at the last second. The champ is coming in like a freight train. Now Johnson's going to have to hit him a good shot, teach him a little lesson again. He's really running after him now. And when he does that, he's going to leave himself wide open. Here he comes again. You can see him coming. He's setting himself and lunging. Got to be a little frustration for the champion at this stage of the fight. Well, Johnson's starting to get a little tired now. It's only the sixth round. He's starting to get a little tired. Well, that is the big question we raised early. Could he keep up this movement? Of course, he's, he's talking fights. to the champ now. In the interview, he said, I'll be there at the finish if it goes that long. Well, he's talking to the champ. He's acting mean. 28-year-old Von Zell Johnson, number eight ranked contender. Under a minute to go, round six. I'm sure Matthew would like to get him to stop and fight flat-footed, at least for one flurry, but so far Johnson has not succumbed to that. A little blood on the nose of the champion Muhammad that may be from his nostril and wiped up there. We'll watch that closely. Under 30 seconds to go, round six. Johnson is not going to be able to keep up this bouncing for 15 rounds. Then he's going to have to settle down. He slipped there. No knockdown. Well, it is a knockdown. And he gets up saying, he never hit me. I did not think that was uh, from Absolutely a blow. Absolutely not. He just tripped over his own feet. And Johnson assuring the champion that it was not a knockdown. They did make the count, however. We're back with a look at what was called a knockdown. As you can see on the replay, he was trying to step to his left, duck under a punch. And as he says to the referee, hey, he never hit me. And it certainly appeared that he did not. We are live now on round number seven. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy, WBC light heavyweight championship fight. The champion, Muhammad in black, has been in pursuit of the very fast stepping Vonzel Johnson. And our question continues to be, can Johnson keep up this movement through 15 if he has to? Tim, the answer is no, he can't. He's going to have to settle down, throw a few good solid punches to get the champ to respect him again. That way the feints will work and he can move around. He's Now he's really galloping around the ring. The 
referee is Tony Perez from New York. He is not involved in the scoring. That is done by three judges at ringside under new WBC rules. Paul Cavalier, Eva Shane, and William Postra, all from New Jersey. All right, Val Johnson settled down, Tim. He's just doing a nice, solid combination. Now he's back to the movement again. He has to settle down, throw a couple of good snappy punches in there. Still just a trickle of blood from the left nostril of the champion, Muhammad. Neither fighter in any problems with cuts or swelling. That was the first time that the champ cut the ring off pretty good. Johnson tried to move to the right, and the champ took a step over and kept him right in front of him. He's learning there. He just did it again. No damage done there. Nor there. Under a minute to go round seven. And he gets a warning from Tony Perez. Well, I don't know if he should have got a warning, Tim, because Johnson turned his back. Yes, he did. You know, they say protect yourself at all times in that ring. Under 30 seconds, round seven. That was the first time that Johnson made a miss. He was open and Johnson did not peg. I think he's starting to show a little too much respect for the champ. We're coming to the end now, the seventh round. Uh, Sam Solomon told the champ, he says, look, he knows about the overhand right. He says, forget about it. Stop throwing that overhand right and start throwing those left hooks to the body. Now let's see what the champ does. Gil Clancy with Tim Ryan. We are live from Atlantic City in round eight of the scheduled 15 round championship fight. The champion in black, the challenger Von Zell Johnson in white. If you've joined us along the way, we've got it to be a pretty even fight on our scorecards with Johnson getting the early lead. The champion coming back in the last few rounds. And of course, how the judges see it may be entirely different. There's no doubt that Muhammad has been frustrated by the movement, particularly to the right of Von Zell Johnson. I've noticed that this is the first round that the champ is starting to use the left jab. That's what you have to do. You feel your way in behind that jab. This guy's a tall guy. Then when you get the distance, you can throw the big punches. Twice the right hand lead. At least that was a little better, Tim. He didn't throw himself off balance. He just threw it right at the fellow's chest. Johnson has proved to be hard to hit thus far. We're now in the eighth round. Muhammad has yet to land one real good, solid shot. Tim, now we can see why he's never been stopped as a pro. Right. <laughs> has to show a little more offense, though, if he wants to win this championship. Yes, he does. He showed a good right, right counter to the body there. Johnson breathing a little more heavily for the first time in this fight. Mouth open, a little more often. That was, again, the, the champ doubled up a jab, moved in a little more closely that time. That's, that's, what, that's a little better. That's what he has to do. Get that range. Under a minute to go in the eighth round. Overhand right landed that time. And then Muhammad muscled him back out to the center of the ring. Under 30 seconds to go, round eight. And blood now from the nose of Bonzel Johnson. See, Timmy's moving in behind that jab now. 
Right hand. Just grazed Johnson. But he is finding the range a little more closely each time. You know what round this is? Huh? You know what round this is? You know what round this is? No, you know what round this is? Come on now. Ninth round, goddammit. I want you to back him up. Take it to him. Well, we should see some excitement now. Angelo Dundee said this is the ninth round. Now start backing him up. He's let's let it all hang out. Let's see what happens right now. That's what he has to do. Take his shot. He wants to become champion. I'd be telling him the same thing. Round number nine, Angelo Dundee exhorting his challenger, Von Zell Johnson and White. They told him to back him up. He's standing flat-footed, Johnson, but he's edging back. Low blow warning to Matthew Saad Mohammed from referee Tony Perez. Johnson is standing toe to toe now. Good, solid combinations. Okay, break. No motion, step back, please. Come on, no motion. Well, this is where we'll find out how strong he is if he continues to stand he's there. Still, he's going to number one on a champ's head right now. Digging to the body, Johnson landing. Well, Johnson certainly paid attention to Angelo Dundee's orders. He's not bouncing around the ring. He is letting it all hang out. Whether it's going to win it for him or lose it, he's taking his shot. Well, this should be where Muhammad wants Johnson. Let's see whether the champion responds to the change in style. Overhand right from the champion. Counter punching from Johnson. This certainly is no easy fight for the champ. Combination from Muhammad landed. Well, now we know Johnson can take a punch. Good right to the body back from Johnson. Left hand landed from the champion, and he blocked the counterpunch. Under a minute to go, round nine. Two good left hooks by Johnson. He's a classy fighter. Right hand counter off Muhammad's miss. Good left hand from Johnson. Under 30 seconds, round nine. Left hook from Johnson. Final seconds of the ninth round. Angelo Dundee still hollering at referee Tony Perez. We are live now in the 10th round of the Schedule 15 rounder. The champion Matthew Saad Mohammed in black had his hands full with the challenger Von Zell Johnson in white from Columbus. Close fight as we see it to this point into the 10th round. Boxing action. Action live on the CBS Sports Spectacular today from Valley's Park Place Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. Johnson has a cut over his left eye. Not quite, it's not wide open right now, but there is a cut there. Angelo Dundee's gonna have to go to work between rounds. I'd like to alert our stations along the line. We'll be going to a station break at the end of this round. This is round number 10. You notice, Tim, we mentioned earlier that there's a moment of truth in the fight. Now both fighters are flat footed. There's no more of that lateral movement from Johnson. Now it's punch for punch. Always comes a time. 
Good left hook landed from Johnson. Oh, he has talent. Can you imagine if he would have been an active fighter? Let's say if he would have had 20 fights in the last three years instead of instead of four fights against ordinary guys. Well, he claims that uh, he was being ducked by fighters, that he couldn't get fights. I can see why. He's tough. Tough guy to fight. Oh, what a right hand lead. That snuck that uppercut through and landed it right on the chin of the champion. Unless Johnson completely runs out of gas, Tim, the champ is in a lot of trouble this afternoon. Johnson is the sharper puncher and a smarter fighter. Under a minute to go in the 10th round. Blood from the nose of Johnson. Nothing apparently serious. He's tired though, Tim. Johnson's tired. Well, we can see a little weariness setting in in the eighth round. His legs don't look as strong now. No, he's he tired. He vowed to be in it at the finish. He knew that Lopez and Conte in the 15-round loss were losers because Mohammed was stronger in the late round. Johnson said, that won't happen to me. 20 seconds left in round 10. Mohammed leading on the challenger Johnson and Tony Perez, the referee, in to separate them. We'll be back after this word from your local station. Boy, Angelo really did a number on Johnson between rounds. He says, I want you to back this guy up, shove him. He says, you got the title in your hands. The other guy's got nothing left. I don't know about that. Well, that's what you usually tell your fighters, though, right? Well, that's right. You believe seen, it or not. I've seen my fighters come back exhausted. As soon as they sit down, I tell them the other guy's tired. <laughs> this is round 11. The champion, Matthew Saad Mohammed in black. Bonzel Johnson, the challenger in white. But you know, Angelo is right. His fighter is tired. But what makes you think that the other fellow's so fresh? You know, one big punch when guys are tired can make a big difference in a fight. And there was a Slight big left cut. hook by Johnson. A big one. Slight cut over the left eye of Johnson has not been a factor thus far, but the... He's doctor, winging, though, Johnson. He's really landed some shots in there. Doctor routinely checked it out between rounds, and that angered Angelo Dundee as well. So go look at the other guy. Good short right hand from Johnson. Toe-to-toe -to -toe action, Tim. Solid punches. Both fighters are getting hit. Good left hand of the body from the champion, Muhammad. Well, a little south of the border, Tim. Solid exchange, and Muhammad backed up Johnson. He's got him in trouble. The champion sends Vonzel Johnson to the canvas. Vonzel Johnson, the challenger, decked by the champion, Muhammad. He's up in time telling Tony Perez he's all right. Round 11, the champion trying to finish him off. Nailed him with a good right hand against him. Johnson's really tired. He's Under tired to go. Here's that strength of the champ coming to, coming to bear now. He's such a strong guy. Big right hand. It's all over. The referee stopped the they fight. They stopped the fight. Matthew Saad Muhammad defends his light heavyweight championship as Vonzel Johnson is stopped in the 11th round by the champion who continues to show his strength and stamina late in the fight. He had his problems early, but Vonzel Johnson slowly running out of gas from about the 8th round on, although he still threw some tough punches even here in the 11th. But Matthew Saad Muhammad had the tougher one, sending Johnson to the canvas, and then Tony Perez stepping in to say, that's enough. The champion has retained his WBC Light Heavyweight Championship 
for the technical knockout here in the 11th round. We're going to see that first knockdown again. Here it is, Gil. Right hand on the side of the head, followed by a left hook. Here we go. He's in trouble now, Johnson. He just overpowered him. Right hand, left hook, another right, another left. Seven punches. And that last and right hand, and thing. then the left straight. He went down in sections, Tim. Yes, he did. Six foot four, Vonzel Johnson. And really, to all intents and purposes, it was over at that point. Tony Perez took a close look at Johnson, and once he was in trouble over in the corner to our left, he said, that's enough. Well, we'll be talking to the champion, Matthew Saad Muhammad, as we await the official announcement and the time of the TKO here in the 11th round. There is Vonzel Johnson, apparently uh, none the worse for wear, but he was a beaten, tired man in the 11th round. We're going to show you that knockdown one more time. Look, count these punches that land. That was just a stiff jab, but that was the one that finally did it. So there is Matthew Saad Muhammad. And uh, he had his, his work cut out for him here this afternoon against Fonzel Johnson. They still haven't made the official announcement, but he's got that belt safely back on. And we'll Matthew Saad Muhammad, an 11th round TKO. And Matthew, uh, like the Yaki Lopez fight, the challenger made your work today. It was a, a good workout. Were you surprised by him? Well, first of all, I want to say I salam alaykum to all the Muslim brothers. And hello, Montgomery County Boys Club, Club Steve Trace. Uh, he did give me a hard task in the beginning of the round because his height was very tall, so he, you know, it made things unbalanced there for a while. So I had to take my time and really get loose up for there for a while, and uh, until I got in and now. Of course, we heard Sam Solomon saying, hey, Matthew, quit driving for that home run with that right hand. He said, yeah. go to work, do your other things. Well, you know, with tall men, you throw overhand right and left uppercut. I was throwing the right hand, but nothing coming back with the left uppercut, the left hook to the body. And, uh, well, gradually, I eventually got it. He showed a lot of movement, particularly going to his right very well to stay away from oh, your left yeah. hook. Well, that was very smart of him for there for a while. Uh, but I kept the pressure. I knew that he would get tired. You know, a man can't keep on boxing. He's no Muhammad Ali. Well, that's what we wondered about as the fight went on, whether he could keep it up or not. It looked to us about the eighth round that he started to slow down some. Yes. The punch, well, the body punches definitely got him, but, you know, it took his toll. First of all, I want to say... Uh, I de I'm dedicating this fight to all the Atlanta children, the 12, is it 12, 19, 19 children that was uh, assassinated over in Atlanta, Georgia. And I have a green, a little green ribbon to uh, show that. Right all right. Here. The champion, Matthew Saad Muhammad. Now, you told me yesterday that uh, your primary aim is to unify this light heavyweight title. We see Eddie Mustafa Muhammad here today. Is there any progress now that this one's behind you to perhaps make that fight again? Well, first of all, I want to announce to the world, announce to the public that uh, I think I'm ready to retire because, you know, it's no money there. I mean, if they go hurry up and unify the title within one year, then I'll stay there. But I'm getting ready to retire if that doesn't come off. But you'd still want that fight? Well, definitely. That's the main purpose of why I'm here in boxing today, to unify the title. Uh, that's it. Okay. We wish you the best of luck. Great job here this afternoon.